Let's talk about um, uh, what happened in the Texas state legislature, because um, when you think about how, even at the time, how controversial it was, let's say, uh, when um, Dan Quayle was talking about uh, Murphy Brown, you know, some <laughs> now, I mean, honestly, this is like, I guess this is uh, 20... I remember it was around, it was going into 92. Yeah, 20 years ago, I guess. And, I was a college Democrat. And, <laughs> and the, uh, the, the virulence, the misogyny, um, the, the sort of the backwardness I, it has not in any way dissipated, at least maybe in terms of numbers it has, in terms of those people, but the, the belief uh, structure of these people, I mean, uh, I don't know if you, you caught um, uh, Rick Perry's uh, talk that he gave yesterday at some, I, I can't remember uh, what. Yes. Uh, when she eventually got through Harvard, as if Rick Perry, you know, if you gave him a cerebral graft, 800 point head start in his SATs and, oh, I don't know, what's the third thing? Uh, if, you know, that he'd be able to get into Harvard Law, uh, you know, and yet he's this woman who grew up in a, in a trailer park and was a teenage mom herself and was a daughter of a, you know, a teenage mom and got herself into Harvard Law and accomplished what she accomplished. That He's talking about her in a demeaning... I, I think you're exactly right. I don't, you know, Rick Perry was a rural, you know, uh, conservative white guy from Texas, who, you know, and I, to these guys, that's kind of my point. I don't think they can help themselves because I just don't think they're separate from the rest of us. They go, they attend their own churches, they attend their own, you know, pig fries or whatever the hell it is. And I just don't think they, to them, speaking about fetal masturbation and things like this, this is just, this, apparently when they come out and they say these things, this is what they talk about when they're in crowds together. They discuss whether rape creates pregnancy or not. That's an actual topic of debate. Uh, Rick you know? Perry and, also was talking about how, you know, you know when they're screaming, that's when we're doing, uh, I don't know exactly how he put it. It was it, it was pretty offensive, but I'll tell you what was fascinating about, uh, and there's been some people who've written pretty uh, interesting stuff on this. Amanda Marcotte comes to mind. But um, the, 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 the calculus of, you know, what if she had been aborted? That was his whole context for, uh, you know, uh, Wendy Davis uh, of a single mom, and she was a, a single mom. And what if she had, um, you know, uh, been aborted? Uh, the, that calculus is sort of a, is a, is a fascinating calculus because you could also uh, flip it. And uh, ask Rick Perry if there aren't people, uh, you know, the, I mean, aside from the idea of, like, would, uh, would America be a better place if Rick Perry was not born? I mean, I'm, I'm not being flip here. I mean, this is, if you're going to use this uh, logical framework of someone who you're looking at their life at age 50 and looking back and saying, what if we had never gotten the contribution of this person because they had been aborted? Well, then you well, must Texas also certainly couldn't. I don't think he's had much contribution nationally, except for us laughing a lot. But, well, yeah, but, but I mean, you need to flip be this because there are also people who uh, I mean, he he has sat upon uh, and authorized the killing of several hundred people whom he must have he's thought. Correct, by the way, I think it's 261 or something like that now. 261, presumably. Um, if the, uh, the, the, uh, these people, um, uh, you know, uh, ostensibly if we, uh, you know, we don't know for sure, uh, because we can never have that level of assuredness, but in Rick Perry's mind, these people killed someone and they deserve to die. Well, perhaps they never deserve to be alive. I mean, if, you know, right. the, the, Well, the, you know, I mean, you know that, that secret passage that's not often quoted that Jesus said. I, I'm not... He said, he, he said uh, turn the other cheek, but then pull the electric lever. Indeed. And it's well, not often quoted, but it's out there. If you look and you find it. So he is just following the will of Jesus by killing 261 people. Well, I mean, but, but I mean, aside from that, my point is, though, is that if you're going to um, uh, retroactively look at a person's life and say, if they had never been born, we would have lost the contributions of this person. Surely you could also say the opposite, that there are people That's who true. have lived in the history of the world uh, that had they never been born, we would have been better off. And uh, yeah, but, but you know what? I, I don't even accept their formulation. And that's, that's, that's the thing. They do that to try to push you into the place of that you're, you're aborting actual people. And my response to that is, well, we don't know. 
the whole point is, is that I don't believe it's a person. And so my belief is that Wendy Davis would, you know, her, she would be somewhere else. She'd be someone else. I, I don't accept their formulation that a person was aborted because I don't believe it's a person yet. It's a fetus, and there's a difference. Yes, and um, I mean, and, and and certainly in terms of 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 uh, of our constitution and and other mechanisms, but um, but but leaving that leaving that aside for a moment, let's talk about the implications of 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 what what happened in that session because it was stunning. I was up all night watching this thing, and um, it was I, like an Aaron Sorkin uh, episode, wasn't it? It was. It was, and I'll tell you something. <laughs> you know, when uh, we have a very rough uh, uh, barometer of 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 what type of events that take place in the news, at least on this program, what type of events that take place are really galvanizing people, and I can see it in the downloads when we see a spike in, in how many podcast downloads we're getting. I can see it in, a, in what um, YouTube videos will pop uh, online uh, because we watch those metrics. Uh, and, you know, of all the things that took place this week, there was... A, a tremendous amount of interest, and I would say in, in, in many quarters, that got the least coverage of any of the stories that took place this week. And I, I, I think the impact of, of the attacks on women, when we saw it in the 2012 election, but I think this is not over. I think this is growing, and I think the level of intensity and, uh, you know... It's, it's, it's going to. I... I couldn't agree with you more. I think it was a sleeping tiger waiting for a galvanizing event. You know, I, I work, uh, you know, I, I, we talked about the gun issue on this show. I, you know, I've, I spent a lot of time um, working on abortion rights, too. Um, and, you know, I've been seeing, I, I'll tell you, I've been seeing a similar pattern kind of over the last sort of six months or a year, which were these constant assaults on, on people by bullies. Um, pushing, you know, attacking. It's the same people who show up in comments sections on blogs and places and, and attack you in, in sort of a vicious way and try to suppress any dissent. Um, and it was, you know, and sadly the galvanizing event on guns was Newtown. You know, sadly it was that. But on this, it sort of, it was what was going to be the event that was going to make that, you know, and I'll, to, use, to use a fun phrase, that silent majority stand up and just sort of say enough. You know, and and this ended up being that um, in an amazing way. I was watching it that night, too. And it just was something where, you know, I could feel it in the community from, from you know, women I'm friends with who were very involved in this movement and, and just seeing be, you know, women I'm friends with and really, frankly, men, too, who care passionately about it, who, you know, kind of were, were, were you know, waiting to, to say enough, enough being on defense, enough watching North Dakota and Arkansas you know, and, and all these states pass one more draconian law after another. Um, and the reminder, you know, just again, that we, I started off this show with that one person, you know, we saw, saw it with Russ Feingold at times in the Senate and Paul Wellstone. We've seen it with Elizabeth Warren speaking out on banking issues more recently. One person can make a difference. They really can when they have that kind of a platform and a, mi and a microphone and, and the, 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 the theatrics and the, the drama of the willingness to stand up to this kind of power. And it just, everything came together because she also happens to be a, a terrific speaker. She, she did everything right. They, they tried to, to steal one of their phrases, shut that whole thing down yeah. uh, by using a ridiculous, claiming that she was speaking about things that were non-germane. You're not allowed to do that three times, apparently, speaking about things that are non-germane to the debate. She's speaking about sonograms, which, from what I remember, are pretty well related to abortion when you're passing bills that make women have sonograms that are unnecessary. And so it was the manner in which it was done. Everything just came together. It was one of those moments where something was ready to go viral, and it did in an amazing way. Uh, you know, the, the other thing that I think, the other dynamic that's at play here is that the the issue of abortion rights has uh, metastasized both on the right, and I think it's always been that on the right, insofar as that it's really about um, about women's role in society 
as opposed to hey, just. Let me say quickly. I don't want to cut you off. No, but, but, but just of course, you know, for the people who say no, it's not. There may be some percentage of people where you know it's a child's life and this and that, or consistent. But when Rick Perry refuses to take Medicaid funding under Obamacare, extra Medicaid funds, then. How can you how can you believe that, that it's anything else? It's impossible to believe it because when the same group of people who who scream and yell and claim that it's the fetus they care about are actually rejecting funds and health care for live children and allowing them, let's be quite frank here, to die, yeah. allowing them to be impoverished, allowing them to die because they don't have access to health care, then it, then it is, it's quite obvious not allowing women to have access to birth control, which would prevent. Many of the uh, of the uh, you know open prevent abortion in many cases. Well, then it's quite obvious what it's about, isn't it? I mean, it couldn't be more obvious. And I think obviously the um, uh, the, the 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 rape talk and and and. But when when uh, Letitia Van Depute, she was the uh, the other Texas legislator when she stood up, and uh, during this uh, parliamentary fight, and her uh, motion. Uh, was ignored. And when she said, you know, what does, uh, how loud does a woman have to be for you to recognize uh, her making a motion as opposed to my male colleagues? That is what I'm talking about, is that, that I think for what has happened over the past two or three years is that the issue of abortion rights are now seen to be part of a larger fabric, and I think this has always been the case by people who have been advocates in this, but I think the broader population, and on both sides of this issue, are now seeing these, and it's more, I think, obvious to those who are not so um, uh, politically um, uh, aware and involved, that these issues are are larger than just whether or not a woman has a right to an abortion. It has to do That's with the exactly rights right. of women uh, and their role in society. And I think that is what has been the sort of fundamental change over the past couple of years, is that there is a, an awareness that this is um, part of a larger story about the way that those uh, foes of abortion rights perceive women and vice versa. Uh, and um, I think, you know, there are... And, and they say it, right? I mean, you know, they, they, we, we, we hear it from the likes of, of the moronic Eric Erickson uh, and company about, about men can do things and women can't. We heard it from Phil Gingry, one of the lunatics who's running for the nomination for the Georgia Senate open tenant seat, uh, who's, a, who's a congressman who said that we should be teaching different gender roles uh, at early ages and mm -hmm. telling women you can do this and, and or telling girls you can do this and boys you can do that. I mean, you know, again, they can't keep their mouths shut because what they talk about amongst themselves, they don't realize that most of the rest of us out there uh, who still have all of our teeth disagree with. Um, and, uh, and and there's your, there's your problem for them. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I think, you know, now that this veneer is ripped off, I mean, I, I, I really do think that we are seeing a uh, a, a new wave of feminism. I don't think it uh, it um, it self IDs as that way, but I think that's what we're seeing. Is that I mean I, I I do think that there is a just a a broader awareness that this issue is tied into uh, women's economic rights and I mean just uh, broader issues that have to do with roles in society and on some level. It's it's a function of the right being more naked about it, in in that they are you know uh, perfectly willing to take the next step and say you know, and, and, and Amanda Marcotte I think in her piece uh, uh, touched on this too. This is why they see this you know the the whole notion of this uh, the you know circling back to that logic of uh, Rick Perry's statement about what if uh, Wendy Davis had been aborted essentially. Um, that's why they see. If you carry that out to its logical conclusion, anything yeah, that you know what a great go ahead, sorry. Well, anything that prevents pregnancy, and anything that prevents the birth of a child, including contraception, uh, is problematic because you're preventing life from being created and from ultimately being born, and that's why they can get to the place where they say, you know. Uh, God's given a gift when uh, a rape takes place. And, you know, <laughs> right. I mean, this is this is the logical extension of what they're saying here. Is that... No, and, and, 
That's right. If, right. if we talk about the 30 billion people who would be here in society were it not for abortion, well, then you could also talk about the uh, umpteenth billion people who would not be here were it not for contraception. And then you can even take it a step further. If it weren't for, uh, for laws that prevent rape, we would have even more and more people. Uh, that would be around because we should have. And in fact, if if we didn't, if we didn't, we're talking about the people that would be here if we hadn't uh, used yellow cake and curveball to go to war in Iraq. Well, we don't hear we them gotta, go that far that because too? once people are born, uh, then then uh, they can be judged by man. Then they're on their own. Independence, because yes. then it's all about freedom. Right. I mean, so, um, it, but. But 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 leaving that aside, again, you know, I, I think it's fascinating what's happening. It's going to have into, uh, it's going to have electoral uh, implications. But I think more importantly, uh, we're going to see broader societal uh, changes that um, that are going to be even uh, far more important. Well, and let me say quick. I know we're probably going to have to go soon, but let yeah. me say you know, you brought up Amanda Marcotte's piece, a quick a great companion piece. If you want to read something else, is to go over to RH Reality Check. Um, some of you are probably familiar with the writer, activist, uh, Natasha Chart, uh-huh. her husband, Chris Bowers, who's at Daily Coast. And they just had a baby who's had to go into, uh, into back into the NC- NICU oh, a couple of times. And she wrote a great piece about the forced birth crowd and sort of bro- broke down. You know, she chose, chose to be a mother and, and, and everything, but she sort of pointed out along the way um, what the different costs are and what it would be like for a woman who didn't have insurance. You know, $1,000 a day in, in the NICU. You know, when they had to have special care done because she didn't have her baby six weeks early, that would have cost, it cost $24,000 for the procedure, another 4500 for the attending physician, another 9000 for, for the anesthesiologist with the epidural. And yet these are people that claim they care about life or forcing women to have birth but don't want to provide the health care. What happens to women who, you know, I mean, we're talking now about uh, in the average and the median yearly salary for an adult in this country. Right. What are the numbers I just added up, you know? And, um, and so I, I really would imp- implore people to go and read that piece because it's brilliantly constructed. She also works in people she talked to along the way when she got in the cab and the hospital cab driver who, who saw that his wife who had two kids and because they couldn't, they, they couldn't afford insurance. There wasn't a doctor there. And one of the children was born with the umbilical cord twins around uh, his or her neck and now has brain damage because of it. Because they could, I mean, it just, it's a piece that makes the case, the, the case that I think goes along with the one you're pointing, about, pointing out about with Amanda Marcotte in every way. Yeah. That what this crowd wants when they're telling you you have to have kids. Um, what, what that means for a lot of people who don't have jobs they can just go back to or own their own business or do their own radio show or whatever, but will get fired who are day-to-day laborers. And just all the implications of what these people want to do. I would call it a must-read.